Okay, so I'm starting the recording of this meeting. Hello everyone, my name is Maria Cruz. I am a program manager in the Google Open Source Program Office. And this is the Knative Community Meetup. Um, I think we are going to go ahead and start with working group updates. Uh, the first one is an update from the auto scaling working group. And I'm gonna be sharing the agenda here in the chat box. So if anybody new rolls in, please make sure that uh, they can access it. All right. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, this is more or less, uh, not really an update, it's more a poke. Um, we've been considering deleting a um, feature that Canadian currently has where you can use the HPA as opposed to Canadian's own auto scaler, the KPA, to scale based on the metrics that we collect in the system for the KPA. And we believe that there's no real reason to do that because the KPA should strictly be better, quicker, make better decisions and stuff like that on, based on these metrics. Um, so we sent out a few emails to the mailing list asking if people are actively currently using HPA plus concurrency or request per second metrics. And if so, please speak up in those email threads um, because if we don't get any signal of usage, it will be used, it will be deleted in uh, the 016 release. It's alpha quality and stuff like that. So here we go. Do we have any questions for Marcus? Okay. Uh, the next update is from the documentation working group. Uh, and I'm uh, it's an update that I'm sharing with you all. Um, we just finished uh, the blogging guidelines, which are in the process of getting published to the GitHub repository. Um, and these blogging guidelines are uh, supposed to serve as, um, yeah, basically a guide on what kind of content we would like to see on Knative Dev blog. So if you have any, any blogs that you would like to share there, you are most welcome to submit it through that process. And if you have any questions, uh, you can reach out to me or to the documentation working group on Slack. And we hope to see uh, more posts by uh, all of you in the coming weeks. At the moment, we are working on uh, sharing the demos that we have on the community meetup as a blog as well. Um, and that's how we are growing the, the Knative Dev blog. Any questions about this? For the blog, do you accept uh, a republication? Meaning if a blog was published somewhere else, would you accept it to be syndicated there or no? So we're trying to move away from reposting exactly the same blog um, because that doesn't work well towards the SEO uh, for any blog post, really. Uh, but if, if you want to publish a similar story and rewrite it in some way, we can, we can work on that. Okay, so like an expansion on an existing blog is okay, just as long as it's not exactly the same text. Yeah, exactly. Okay, sweet. Thank you. Yeah. Google doesn't like seeing that duplicate text on multiple sites and will demote all of them as spam. <laughs> I forgot who I was talking to, sorry. Oh, I'm not at Google anymore, but I've kept track of SEO stuff. No, Maria is in a few others, yeah, I get it. Thank oh, you. But none of us know how the search algorithms work specifically. Yeah, mm. I think what Evan is referring to is the, the search algorithm, not the company. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We confuse it. Anyway, thank you. Yeah. Okay, so if there are any other questions about the blog, I'm happy to respond to those. Uh, otherwise, um, we are going to move on to the next item in our agenda, which are 
technical questions to the steering committee? They don't have to be technical. This is just a few minutes of like AMA time. If you have any questions for steering, I'm on, Brenda's on. Any update on steering voting? Uh, like composition of, of steering committee after bootstrap phase, you mean, Scott? Yeah, we were talking about like uh, voting, maybe voting for TOC seats and, and then the next yeah. phase is steering seats and if there's any progress on that front. So Brenda, you've been working on that. Do you want to say a few words about that? Oh, here we go. I'm here. Can people hear me? Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Um, essentially, the update is we're, we're kind of playing around with two options right now. One of them is breaking down steering composition seats based on contributions, and the second one is based off of elections. So we're just figuring out what the trade-offs are um, between the two options. I think maybe one thing I would actually pose for the folks here is, like, is there an option y'all uh, would like to see one way or the other. Um, Good question. Scott, any opinion on that? I don't know. <laughs> I think uh, I think contribution is a tricky thing to measure, and. Uh, I was just looking for like you know the what's the what's the update on the next step there because we had talked about steering and TOC and we've done some stuff. So mm -hmm. I'm not sure. um, Alex was asking for a little bit more detail on the options. Maybe maybe we could like share the write up, and folks could just directly look at it. Is there any reason not to do that? I think as long as people understand that none of this is binding. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe one thing uh, one, one thing we can do is make sure we share out the doc early next week. It, it's pretty fresh, so I want to make sure Steering has a chance to just go over it. Um, but we can just make sure we open it up for feedback like we did for the POC process. Um, so folks in the community can weigh in and we can hear what y'all want. I think that would be awesome. Uh, so we have uh, we we have a meeting uh, for steering that's recurring every Monday. Maybe maybe after that meeting we could open it up. Yeah, we can plan to do that. One one last question: Steering came back with new rules for the project, like Scribe. Has anyone taken that role yet? I don't know of any groups that actively have a scribe on a regular basis. Me neither. I see a, a, a question in the chat that is simple, so I'll just answer it quickly. The question is, are the steering meetings open? Uh, the ones that we have on Monday are, are not open, but there is uh, there's no reason that we can't, can't have an open one if, uh, uh, at another time if people have an interest in that. Is that something that folks would be interested in? Like one of the main takeaways I've had personally recently is that more frequent communication and closer communication with the community is something that would probably be good for everybody. So I'm completely okay with having some public meeting time for folks to to join and, and chat with us. I mean, I think that was some of the original tent of, intent of the AMAs, right? I think that's really the first form for that. Um, and they sort of got folded into this. Uh, I think the interesting question is you know, whether that needs to be more frequent. 
You were kind of muffled there at the end, Matt. Uh, I was just saying, I think it's an interesting question whether we need to have that be more frequent, as you say, sort of getting information out there and uh, community feedback. Yeah. Um, if if folks would like to do that, like, um, please uh, please let us know. Uh, in terms of of some time like that, uh, I have just sent an invite to K Native Dev uh, for Monday afternoon uh, to talk about the um, the scope proposal for K Native project. Um, in the functions working group retrospective, that was identified as something that uh, perhaps could be improved in different ways. Um, so I will definitely be there. I think other folks from steering will be there. Uh, and there's time set up to talk about that on Monday. Um, if you check the check your calendars, you'll see the invite and there's a link to the proposal document. Okay, um, so it sounds like uh, Stephen is saying plus one, uh, in new t I am new to being active rather than just a user, so trying to understand the inner workings. Okay, so it sounds like what you're proposing, Paul, is uh, open steering committee meetings, open to the community, or more communication channels, or is it feedback on a specific document that you're working on? I, I am saying we have time set up Monday to talk about the proposal for Canadian project scope. Um, and I'm, I'm also like receiving the message from this AMA time that like folks would be interested in having uh, at least one public steering meeting. Uh, so in the TOC steering questions channel, uh, I'm about to start a thread asking like, when do people want to have that and what do you all want to talk about? So we can we can take the rest of that like set up for that offline into TOC steering questions channel on Slack. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. So then everybody cool. can weigh in there on, on Slack. Yep. Awesome. And so we are now going to move on to demos. Before I do that, I want to remind everybody that we have a survey for this meeting and it helps us to make it better. So make sure that you take that. I'm uh, placing it here in the chat. And um, this is where you can tell us uh, what you think about this meeting and any new ideas as well. So the Next person that is up for presenting is Mete with two short demos. All right, let's first make sure that everyone can see and hear me. Is that okay? Yes. Okay, yep. cool. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, I see some names in the chat that I recognize, but for those of you who don't know me, uh, my name is Mete Atamel. I'm a developer advocate at Google. Uh, in Google Cloud Developer Relations. Um, I'm based in London, and uh, I don't know, I guess people are all over the place, so hopefully you're well and, and you're adjusted to lockdown uh, like I did. Uh, so normally what I do is I, I usually go to like conferences and talk about technologies, and one of these technologies that I talked about quite a bit is Knative. Um, so thanks to everyone who worked on Knative. Um, it definitely enabled me to write more cool demos, and every time I showed it, people like seem to like what they see. Um, but unfortunately, since March, I've been pretty much at home. Um, and on the flip side, uh, this gave me time to build some cool demos. So I just want to go through like a couple of those demos that I built today. Um, most of you probably know um, about the things that I'm going to talk about, but maybe there will be some interesting things here uh, for some of you as well. So let me share my screen first. Um, well, when I try to share my screen, it says host disabled attendee screen sharing. Oh, sorry. Let me 
make you a co-host. Okay, how about okay, now? I see more things now. Uh, let's see, all right. Share. We see it. You see it, you see my screen, yeah? Yes. Okay, cool. Now first, a uh, shameless plug. <laughs> I have this KNATO tutorial on GitHub where I basically try to keep it up to date. I think the latest version of KNATO that I updated this tutorial for was 0 0.14. I'm well aware that there's a new version 15 and I'm going to do an update it like probably tomorrow or, or next week to that. But basically in this tutorial, I show some basic use cases for Kennedy serving, Kennedy eventing, um, Kennedy eventing with Google Cloud and the Tekton pipelines, which used to be called Kennedy build. So feel free to check it out. But uh, today I want to talk about a couple of these. Uh, the first one is image processing pipeline. And the second one is a big query processing pipeline. Uh, so let's just look at the image processing pipeline first. So here, I mean, with both of these pipelines, what I wanted to do is I wanted to build some kind of a processing pipeline um, using some kind of events in Google Cloud. And I wanted, I wanted these services to be kind of chained, but chained in a way that they're kind of, you know, independent of each other. So I can add them and remove them as I, as I wanted them. So the first of, first of these pipelines is image processing pipeline. And the idea here is that the user um, end users will save some images into a cloud storage bucket, which is cloud storage. It's a, for those of you who don't know, it's like a Google cloud object storage service. Um, so you would save some image in, in an input bucket and then you would get some, those images processed and saved to an output bucket. So it's something simple. Um, and then I had some requirements like, first of all, when the user saves the image, I wanted it to be filtered. Um, I didn't want any kind of images floating in the, in the pipeline. Uh, so this filter service, um, it uses Vision API to determine whether the image is safe or not. And I will, I will talk about what safe means uh, as we go through the code. Uh, so once the image goes through the filter, um, then the filter sends a, a a message out. Um, well, I guess first I should describe in detail like what happened. So the user saves the image in the bucket. Then I set up cloud, Google Cloud Storage source. So this is a, an event source that's part of the Knative GCP project um, that, that enables you to listen to Google Cloud start storage events. So when the user saves the, the, the file that generates an event and that event gets pulled into the Knative cluster with the cloud storage source. Uh, and then I just make that to pass the message to broker and I have a default broker in the namespace. So the, the message ends up in the namespace and then the filter service has a trigger that will receive that message. And then it will basically know which image has, that has been saved. And then it will make a call to vision API. And in vision API, you can basically say, you know, given this image, can you tell me what's the likelihood of this image being a, a violent image, for example? And, or what was the likelihood of this image being an adult image? So you, it gives you the likelihood of like four or five different metrics. So I just look at that and I just say, okay, as long as this mes message, this image is not any of these likelihoods, so it's not likely that it's, it's a violent image, it's not likely that it's an adult image and so on and so forth, and I will let it through. So the filter, image, filter will determine that it's safe, then it will generate a cloud event, um, a custom cloud event. That's, I think the type is, I, I made it to be like file uploaded. Yeah, I, I just mentioned it here. It's like file uploaded and it will pass it back to broker. Um, that's what, one of the things that I like about Knative is this whole model of like brokers and the triggers. So the broker is kind of like the backbone of, of the whole eventing pipeline. And then you can receive messages from it and you can receive certain messages by applying filters on your trigger, but then you can also reply to messages, which makes it really easy because, you know, when the filter receives the, the cloud event from cloud um, storage source, it can reply with a custom message to broker and then broker figures out where to route it, which is nice. It makes it really easy to, to write the code. Um, so then this Knative um, 
samples file upload event is being listened by two other uh, services, resizer and labeler. So the resizer will receive the image. Usually it's big and it will resize it using um, image sharp. Um, my services are in C sharp, so I use image sharp, which is kind of like image magic, but for C sharp. So this will resize it to 400, to 400 and then it will emit another kind of message, a custom message called file resize. And then the, the watermarker service will receive that image and it will uh, add a watermark to it and then it will save to the output bucket. Uh, similarly, the labeler will listen for the file uploaded um, message and then it will use Vision API to extract the labels out of the image. Uh, so what this image is about, and then it will save those labels as a text file to the output. So given a single image, we will basically end up with three different files. And these files are the resize image, the resize image with the watermark, and then the labels of the image in the text file. So this is the pipeline. Um, and I go through like what you need to do to set it up here. So just to show it quickly, you need to create the buckets, uh, input and output and then you need to set up the Google Cloud storage source. And if you actually look at the source, I have the, I have the source here. Let me make this a little bit bigger. So this Google Cloud storage source, it has a name, and then it's, this is the bucket that it's kind of listening from. Um, this is the bucket that I created. And then the sync is the broker, because I inject the default broker in the namespace. So basically it just receives it and sends it to the broker. Um, let's see. What else we need to do? So we inject a broker in the namespace by la labeling the default namespace. Then I go through each services, um, the filter service, um, so the service and the trigger, resizer, and, and then the watermarker, and then the labeler. Um, I guess I can show you one of the codes. So let's look at, for example, uh, let's say filter. So if we look at the filter code, so the program, the, this is C-sharp. Um, it just listens on port 8080, but everything basically happens here. So when we receive a post request, um, I have this event reader, um, which, is, which basically reads just the cloud event. So I read the cloud event. Then I have this Bucket, bucket event data reader. <laughs> so we have classes for everything in C-sharp. So, so this bucket event data reader just looks at the data of the cloud event and then extracts the bucket name and the object name from, from there, basically. Um, we can ignore this code because I'm running this on Cloud Run as well. And in Cloud Run, there's a strange bug where I have to check whether the bucket name is what I expect, but for Knit, it's not relevant. Um, and then from, from the bucket name and object name, I create a storage URL. Then I, I pass this to a method called is picture safe. And this is picture safe is basically using vision client. So this is the client to talk to vision API. And then it will call detect safe search async and it will pass in the image URL. And then this will return some likelihood. So as long as my image is not possibly adult medical racist proof of violent, then I say, okay, this picture is safe. And then if it's not safe, I just don't return anything. But if it, if it is safe, then I create an object. So this object is the bucket and the name. So I'm basically, so this is gonna be the, the body of the cloud event. And in the body, I'm just saying, this is the bucket, this is the name of the object that, that you should care about. And then I write this as a custom cloud event. So this is what, the code does here. Um, so the event writer is the thing that kind of takes care of the, this body and converts into a cloud event and then writes it out. Uh, but we don't have to look at the details of that. So this is the filter. Um, and the other ones are pretty much the same kind of setup, except, for example, if you look at the resizer, again, it receives a request, reads the cloud event, gets the bucket name, bucket and the name, and then it downloads the image then it does some um, image magic or, or whatever the library I'm using um, magic to resize it. And then it just uploads it to, to the bucket. And then it sends another um, cloud event for watermarker to take on. So this gives you an idea of uh, what the code looks like. Um, and if you look at the 
So we looked at, this, at the source. Then if you look at the triggers, for example, this is a Knative service. Um, so it just points to the Docker file. But the trigger for filter, um, it filters on object storage ev events. So this, it only looks for storage events from, from Google Cloud Storage. And then it calls this the service filter, uh, the filter service. Um, but then if you look at the labeler, for example, the trigger for the labeler, that will filter on file uploaded. Because this is the event that gets generated by the filter. Uh, and it will only look for those. So that's how you can kind of make um, different services um, get different kinds of events. And this one is also getting uh, yeah, file uploaded event, and so on and so forth. So let me just show you how this works. Um, so I'm in my, um, hopefully this is big enough. So I'm in my um, image processing pipeline folder. And first, let's, up, let's create the source. So Google Cloud Storage source. Yes, uh, I was worried for a second <laughs> that something's not working, but yeah, this source is created. And then let me make sure that there's a broker in the default broker. Yeah, there's a default broker. And then if I do get cloud storage source, hopefully that should be up and running, yes. So now we are getting the events from Google Cloud Storage and to the broker. Now we need to actually create our services. Um, so let me apply the create the service and the create the trigger. This is for filter. And then let's do the same for labeler. Let's do the same for resizer. And let's do the same for watermarker. Yeah, and then if we look at services, well, there's a few other services, but the ones that we care about is the Filter, labeler, resizer, and watermarker, they seem to be running. And then if you do trigger, you can see that all the triggers are ready. Um, so I think it's going to work. Um, let me look at the pods. Yeah, we have some pods running as well. So now let me go to Google Cloud Console. And I'm in, I'm in Google Cloud storage area and then I have my bucket here, Knative images input. And I already have an image here. So let's just upload, let's upload the same image. So this is a, a picture that I look at a lot nowadays because I cannot be <laughs> at places like this. Uh, I'm stuck in my apartment, but basically you can see, hopefully you can see it's, it's mountains and, and sunshine and, and the beach. So let's just upload that and see what happens. Yes, I want to replace the object. Uh, we're uploading the picture. And then let's go back to the terminal. And let me look at the pods. OK, so the you can see some of the pods are terminating because they're scaling down to 0. But let's look at the log of filter. Yeah, you can see the log of the filter that it receives a cloud event. And the source is storage. And this is a type. And this is the actual data that we kind of care about. And then it found the storage URL, determined that this picture is safe. Then it, it replied back with another cloud event. And the data is what I described, like the bucket and the beach. So we pass this on. And then if we look at other pods, let's say, lab um, yeah, let's look at labeler, for example. Yeah, so the labeler received the custom cloud event, and then it made a call to Vision API, and then it says, OK, this picture is labeled sky, body of water, sea, nature, coast, so on and so forth. And then it uploaded this to the output folder, right? And yeah, we don't have to look at all the pods, but the other ones, they already did their work resizing, and others, they're terminating. But if everything worked, let me go back to here. 
And let's go to our output folder. Yeah, you can see I have three um, pictures. And um, this one is the resize picture. This one is the resize picture with Google Cloud Platform as the watermark. And then the beach labels is the labels that I show you. Um, that's the labels that the Vision API extracted. So it works, which is always a good thing when you demo something. <laughs> All right. Um, so I will let me let me pause here for a second. Um, I don't know how much time I have. Do I have more time? Uh, you have a few more minutes. Um, yeah, I think we started at like. 20 minutes past the hour, so. Okay, so I, I can, can have, go for another five, yeah. 10 minutes, maybe? Yeah. Okay. Um, and the second pipeline I'm going to show, and I'll go quickly with, with this one, is that this is a BigQuery processing pipeline. Um, I don't know about you, but when I started working from home, and there were a lot of cases, like COVID cases in London, and I was obsessive with checking for the news every day. Um, at some point, like I decided, okay, after like a couple of weeks, I'm like, I'm not going to check news anymore because this is not productive. Um, so what I would do is that like every day around like five o'clock, I would just go to this website to look at some stats about the UK. And my parents, they, they also live in Cyprus. Um, and I would check the stats from Cyprus as well. But then once I check it, I would again start reading the news. Um, so I was still not being productive. Um, so what I did in this pipeline is kind of find a way to get the news without having to check it myself. Um, so I built a pipeline that would query the COVID-19 data for the countries that I care about, and it will send me an email notification every day around 5 p.m. with the data. So the, the way this works is that we have Cloud Scheduler um, that creates a job to, um, to basically call a service and then this service will, is called Query Runner. Um, and it's a K-native service that will basically go to BigQuery. Um, and BigQuery has many public data sets. And one of them is uh, now called COVID-19 data set. So the, this service will go to this public data set. And it will basically run a query and extract the COVID cases in the last 30 days or so uh, for the country that I specified. Um, Right in this case, like UK, it will get the data and then it will save it to a temporary BigQuery table. And then once this is saved, a uh, query runner will send a custom, custom cloud event that will be received by a chart creator. And chart creator, it's a Python app um, that will simply read this table and then use math.lib to do a simple chart of cases in the country. And then once the chart is generated, it will save it to a charts bucket uh, it, it's a storage bucket um, on Google Cloud. And then this notifier service will re listen for um, um, notifications from this bucket. And when a an, when an chart is saved here, it will get a notification. And then it will use SendGrid to send an email to the end user, in this case, me. Right? So this is what I set up. Um, I guess. Um, we, won't, we don't have to go in too much detail, but a couple of things to mention is that I, I use Cloud Scheduler Source. Again, this is another event source on Canyon Native GCP project to do this scheduling job setup that, uh, and all that kind of stuff. Then I use custom events to send a message from here to here. And then Chat Creator was uses my lip, even though I don't know Python that much, uh, it wasn't that difficult. Um, yeah, and then I use Cloud Storage Source to get notifications here. And then SendGrid was really easy to use, actually. I was pleasantly surprised. So I used SendGrid to send an email. So all the details are here, uh, how to set it up. But I just want to show you how it looks like in the end. So when this works, um, if I go back to my storage bucket, so let's go. So I have this charts bucket. You see that once the chart is created, you can see 
like chart Cyprus and chart, chart United Kingdom. So these are the charts that I created. You can see it says cold cases in United Kingdom. It just gives you some numbers. And then if everything is set up with um, SendGrid, you basically get, uh, let me see if I show you one of my things. So you basically get like an email like this that says a new chart from Bitcoin pipeline. And then um, you get one for Cyprus and one for United Kingdom. So I get one 4 p.m. for Cyprus, one 5 p.m. for United Kingdom. And that's it. That's all my COVID-19 <laughs> news source nowadays, which helps me a lot in terms of staying sane and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, um, yeah, that's all I want to share today. Um, hopefully this was useful. And yeah, let me know uh, if you have any questions or any comments uh, about this. I also blogged about this on my blogs and we're going to also do a summary blog on Knative blog, hopefully. So you can get to the source code and, and all the configuration and details there as well. That's it. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, I think you're still sharing your screen. Yeah, I just oh, stopped sharing. <laughs> With my face on it. Um, do we want to discuss this as a big group? We can also break out in smaller rooms. Uh, what would people prefer? Oh, we I just wanted questions? to say yeah. one thing really quick that I thought was cool. Um, it looks like uh, Mete built a general purpose when an object is uploaded, email it to, you know, email it to me function, um, which seems like that's a nice thing that you could reuse if you had other stuff that generated a chart or, you know, other information daily. So I just wanted to call out that there might be a piece there that you can reuse even if you don't want the whole pipeline. Yes, definitely. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, anything that's saved to a bucket could generate an email to you. Yeah, that would be useful in, in many ways. Yeah. Any other? Oh, there's a question from Alec. Could you show running it in Cloud Run? Can it be combined with the native eventing? Yeah, I actually didn't mention, but I have three versions of this app. Um, one is the Knative eventing version that works with pure Knative eventing. Uh, that's the one that I showed. And then I also wrote it for Cloud Run on GKE. Um, so basically Cloud Run running on Google Kubernetes Engine version which is pretty much same as Knative one, but the way you set things up is a little bit different because in Cloud Run on GKE, they basically augmented the gcloud command line tools to kind of, they converted YAML files into gcloud command line tools, basically. <laughs> so that's why the setup is a little bit different. Um, so I have that as well. And then there's a, a version for Cloud Run Manage. So there's a version of Cloud Run called Manage Cloud Run which is kind of like Knative, but it runs on Google's infrastructure. So I created one for that as well. I will share a link here for my Knative tutorial. And then in there, you will see the different versions of this app, and then you can play with them if you like. Yes, yeah, someone already shared it. Yes, this is the one. Uh, there's no App Engine version, no. <laughs> it's, um, it's the Cloud Run version. So Cloud Run Manage or, and Cloud Run on GKE versions. But there is no App Engine version. Because as far as I know, there is no Knative eventing for App Engine. <laughs> well, if you run Knative eventing somewhere else, you can send the events to a URL that could be running on App Engine. Yeah, I guess technically, yeah, the services could be App Engine, yeah. But it sounds like that's an exercise for the reader. <laughs> sure, that works for me. <laughs> Any more questions or comments to Mete about the the demo? I think Daniel tried to do a joke and it didn't land. 
<laughs> cloud functions. Well, in, in technology, anything is technically possible. So that's, that would be my answer. <laughs> Yes. Um, we can have uh, a few minutes in breakout rooms so that people can maybe connect more one on one. Uh, shall we try that? Okay. Let's see. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cool, so I think people are starting to come back from the breakout rooms. Vincent, you didn't see any any anyone in your breakout room. Yeah, some breakout rooms were some people didn't respond to the <laughs> to the invitation to join the room. Sorry that you were alone in your room. I tried to put at least one two people in one room, but it didn't always work. Uh, so just another reminder to please fill out the survey. Uh, and I think everybody awesome. I think everybody's back from the rooms. And I hope you all had uh, a chance to connect and to get to know each other a little bit better. We are going to continue to experiment with uh, other ways of connecting. Um, I just linked the survey again. So if you have any feedback or any ideas about uh, this event and how to make it better and more useful to all of you, please do share it over there. And thank you all for joining. Uh, and we'll see you next month. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Mete, for the Thank demo. Thank you for the demo. It's cool. Yeah. Yeah, great demo. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.